books have the power to transport us, to have us experience different cultures, to see life and the human condition from different views and different perspectives. Now, while most of the books I read are from the UK or the US or Canada, I do make an effort to try and check out authors and books from other countries to expand my horizons, as it were. So in this video, I've selected five books to recommend from countries outside the UK and North America. But before we take a look at these books, if you like books, literary fiction, dark fiction, or horror, you can help out this channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons, and I do appreciate the kind gesture. Now, let's take a trip around the world through books. We'll start off our world tour in the great country of South Korea with a dark suspense thriller, The Good Son, by Yu Yong Yong from 2016. Yu Yong Yong is a popular psychological crime thriller writer. Her books have been translated into many languages, though The Good Son is the first of her books to be translated into English. And because it's a psychological suspense thriller, I won't tell you much about the plot, except that it starts off with a young man in his early 20s. He lives in a nice duplex in Seoul with his mother. He wakes up one day covered in blood. There's blood throughout the house, and the corpse of his mother is lying in the kitchen. The story unfolds over a few days with lots of flashbacks, and it's quite a page turner. As I was getting close to the end of the book, I was thinking that the writer had written herself into a corner. There was only one of two ways that the book could end, and neither ending would be satisfying. But I loved the ending. I was very impressed with how she handled it, and I finished the book quite satisfied. I also got the impression from reading the book that the police in South Korea, they have a lot more power than the police have say here in Europe or in North America. And I've never been to South Korea, but is it a borderline police state? The book made me nervous about committing crimes in South Korea. I guess I'll just have to be careful. I don't know. So if you're in the mood for a bloody South Korean psychological crime thriller, I recommend The Good Son. The Good Son is a good read. For our next stop on our world tour, we're going to go back to my former home country, Poland, and we're going to go back in time to the year 1922 to take a look at a short story collection by writer of the macabre, Stefan Grabinski, sometimes called the Polish Poe, and his collection, The Dark Domain. This was my first experience with Stefan Grabinski, and I will definitely be checking out more of his work. I was quite impressed. If you like spooky stories, atmospheric, dark, and brooding with elements of the strange and the supernatural, a la Edgar Allan Poe, but perhaps a, a bit more cerebral, wherein the characters explore the world they live in and what they discover doesn't match up with their expectations, and it leaves them unsettled or, or even terrified. If that sounds like your bag, then I recommend The Dark Domain. And now for a bit of levity in our world tour, a bit of magical realism. And we'll head south to the country of Italy to take a look at a classic from 1979. If on a Winter's Night, a Traveler by Italo Calvino. If on a Winter's Night, a Traveler is about two readers who want to read If on a Winter's Night, a Traveler. Except they soon discover that their copies are corrupted. It's the first few pages repeated over and over again, or there are pages missing, and the readers, they get separated. But they want to read this book, so they get a, a new copy, 
except that this copy is uh, from a different writer and it's a different story. And so they keep trying to find the right copy of If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, and they keep trying to find each other. The book is loads of fun, it's funny, um, it's magical, it's romantic, and for book lovers, I would say that it's a must read, or at least a very high recommendation. We'll continue our world tour by continuing south to the continent of Africa, where we'll stop off in the country of Nigeria to take a look at The Fisherman by Chigozie Obioma from 2015. The Fisherman is a coming of age work of literary fiction that takes place in a village in the west of Nigeria. And in this village, there is a river, and apparently this river is quite dangerous. I'm not sure why, perhaps it's the animals or the people that live nearby or the currents or the debris that it carries, but the river is dangerous. So the people in this village, they, created, uh, they create stories and superstitions to try to scare the children from going there. Now this story is about four brothers who decide that they are going to go to the river to fish. And it turns out they love it. It's a bonding experience for these four brothers, and they decide that they are going to be fishermen. Except if their parents find out, they are going to get beaten. Now, I've never grown up in Nigeria, but according to this book, um, Beating Your Children, or uh, disciplining them with corporal punishment is quite a common or um, accepted act. Well, at least it is for this family. In fact, I recommended The Fisherman to a friend of mine, and he abandoned after a few chapters, and he told me that he just couldn't get past the child abuse. And while it's, it's not graphic, but it is there, especially in the first few chapters, I recommended this book to another friend of mine, and he also abandoned after a few chapters, but for different reasons. He told me there's not much fishing in it, and it's true. If you're looking for um, a book about fishing in Nigeria, this isn't it. Uh, the Fisherman is a coming of age story about four brothers bonding making decisions, and then facing the consequences of these decisions. For some reason, I'm not sure why, but it reminded me of To Kill a Mockingbird. So I call it the Nigerian To Kill a Mockingbird, and I thought it was excellent. For the last stop on our world tour, we are going to cross the Atlantic Ocean and head to South America, specifically Argentina, specifically 1962, for an absurdist short story collection by Julio Cortazar called Cronopios e Famas. This collection is divided into three sections. The first section is a sort of instruction manual um, explaining how to carry out ridiculous tasks, like how to find a strand of hair that goes down the drain. Um, it's absurd and hilarious. I loved it. The second section describes the unusual occupations of members of the writer's family. And the third and final section um, classifies beings, human beings, and, or mythical beings. Um, it classifies them according to their views or according to how they approach carrying out random tasks. This collection is absurd, and it's hilarious and lots of fun. Now, I will say that I have read other short story collections from Julio Cortazar, and to be honest, they didn't do much for me. Cortazar was a writer who experimented a lot with different genres, different styles, and different forms and voices. If you've read Hopscotch or Blow Up, um, Cronopio Sefamis is very different. I have a preference for Cortazar in his absurdist phase, and this is one of my all-time favorites. There you have it. 
Thank you for accompanying me on this short world tour. Now, obviously, with only five stops, we skipped many great countries and many great books. Perhaps we'll have to take another tour like this again sometime. If you would be interested in that, uh, the best way to show it is to like, subscribe, and comment. Um, thank you for watching. I'll see you at the next video.